Today's video is a deep dive on the Lisa Eldridge Sorcery eyeshadow palette. So just like all of my other deep dives on these eyeshadow palettes, I'm going to be doing individual swatches and comparisons for each of the shades in this palette. I'm going to be demoing this eye look as well as another eye look. I didn't use the blue in this one, but my other eye look is going to use the blue. So I'll have two demos of eye looks in this video. And of course, I'll just be sharing my overall thoughts on this palette, the shades and all the formulas in here. Before we get into that, if you like this video, if you enjoy my content and you're not subscribed already, I would love for you to consider subscribing to my channel. I do lots of Lisa Eldridge videos as well as videos on lots of other high-end luxury and indie makeup. I like to have a nice blend of reviews, demos, using new makeup, using older makeup in my collection, and really just sharing my love for makeup in general. So if that sounds good to you, I would love for you to subscribe. And now let's get into the Sorcery palette. Unlike most of my other deep dive videos, I actually didn't record myself doing um, my blush, highlighter, and lips because I have two eye demos. I just decided to do that off camera, but I will tell you what I used. I did a little bit of bronzing first. Actually, I used the Victoria Beckham um, bronzing brick. I have the shade two here. I have both shades one and two of this, and I think I really prefer shade two. There's not as much of a difference between the two shades in this one, but I just find there's this beautiful kind of soft muted pink undertone, particularly to the lighter shade in here. That's just really beautiful and works nicely on my skin even when it's really pale like it is now. So I use that mainly the lighter shade, but then I just deepened up sort of closer to the actual perimeters of my face with the darker shade in that as well. For blush, I used the Pat McGrath Divine Rose Blush. I just thought it would be a perfect shade. This shade actually kind of reminds me of the Velvet Sorcery lipstick that came out as part of this collection. Um, so I thought that this would be a good pairing for the Sorcery palette. And I'm not wearing Velvet Sorcery on my lips right now. I will though insert a shot of myself wearing that lipstick and liner with this look so you can see it. Freddie's here once again to lend his support. But right now I'm actually wearing the Velvet Fawn lipstick with the Fawn liner. It seems quite clear that Sorcery was the most popular palette from this launch, and I can completely understand why. I think greens are really popular right now. They've always been popular with me, but I think everyone is just obsessed with green eyeshadows right now, which is wonderful because it means we're seeing more and more of them. And it's great to see this like wide variety of green tones in here. So let's get into the individual swatches and comparisons. After that, I will show you how I did this eye look as well as the other eye look that I wanted to show you. And after that, I'll just come back and kind of round up my thoughts on everything to do with this palette. And I should mention that although this is sold out, Lisa has said it will be coming back in stock, I think in January, sometime early in the new year. So unfortunately, it won't be back before Christmas. Um, but hopefully we won't have too long to wait for this to come back because I think a lot of people are still hoping to pick this up that may have missed out on it on the first round. And so I hope that this video will be useful whether you have this palette already or some of the shades in it or you're thinking of picking up some of the singles or you're thinking of getting the whole palette either if you already have it or you don't have it and you're thinking about it. I'm gonna try to go lightest to darkest again with this one like I did with the Myth video because I do think particularly that powder matte is probably going to stain my hand a little bit, so we'll leave it till the end. So these two here are actually kind of similar in depth, but I'm gonna start with this one right here called Mage, and it's a satin metallic formula. Beautiful kind of sagey green. Lisa describes it as a pale silvery sage green gray with icy blue, pink, gold, and green pearls. So there it is. There's just something so soft and really kind of comforting and calming about this shade, I find. This one I did use today. I think I used all of the shades except for the blue today. This one's on the inner half of my lid. It's definitely a cooler green. There's a lot of gray in there for sure. And so I think that this is a smart one to have in the palette um, because it will be versatile enough to go with any of the greens. I paired it with the very warm green on the other half of my lid. So you can see how it goes beautifully with that as well. But it's kind of versatile enough that it's also going to go really well 
with this blue shade. So I think that's a really smart one to have in there. And I like that it's light enough to bring light and brightness to a look. And it's the satin metallic formula, so you know that it has that opacity behind it. So that's the kind of thing that I felt was perhaps missing from the Myth palette for me. But it's great to see that we have that type of a shade here in the Sorcery palette. As far as comparisons for Mage, I thought I'd draw on the Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette, and particularly the shade Marlin right here. There's Marlin, quite a different color actually. And again, um, we're still in the satin metallic formula with Mage here, so it doesn't have that high shine that we're getting with Marlin, but they're also just different colors, different depths. I'm gonna check on Oz here. I was originally going to save this to compare to Grotto, the emerald green in this palette, but just seeing how much lighter Marlin was, it makes me curious. Yeah, Oz is actually much closer to mage there. Again, it's, it's a different color. There's more of a warm green note and it is a little bit darker, I think, but very interesting that one of the darkest metallics in the Retro Glam palette is reasonably comparable to the lightest metallic in the Sorcery palette. It's also reasonable to look at this shade in the Vega palette. So this is Moon Swirl. There it is there. I know they're different colors, but I just wanna see how they compare because Mage looks so gray in comparison to this other greens, but then when we look at an actual kind of taupey gray, you can see the green really comes through. Now I'd also like to compare Mage to the Liquid Lurex in Anais, because I think these are sort of similar feeling shades. Both kind of sagey colors, sagey, pewtery, silvery kind of shades. And interestingly, Anais actually looks warmer than Mage. I can see almost like there's some gold reflect in Anais that we don't really have with Mage. So quite interesting. And you can see kind of the base colors there are quite different as well. Although I think these would pair together beautifully. In the eye look I'm wearing right now, I use the shade Daphne in the Liquid Lurex as my base for the look. So I can attest to this shade working really well with this palette, but I think that Anais would also work really beautifully with this palette and with this shade in particular as well. Next up is the most popular shade in this whole collection. At least it's the single shadow that sold out first. And I think it's the one that most people were most excited about. This is Mercurial. Mercurial is in the luminous formula and it feels quite dry and hard to the touch. That's what it looks like on the finger. This is probably the best way to be able to see most of the dimension in this shade. And Mercurial is described as a prismatic green to heather duochrome. Yeah, I think this one definitely looks more impressive on the finger or like on the eyelid rather than swatched out like this. But at least you can kind of see the shifting colors. It's really gorgeous. It kind of reminds me of the Northern Lights. Beautiful. And I have only one shadow that I can even think of to compare it to. It's in the Pat McGrath Nocturnal Nirvana Quad, and it's this one right here. And this shade is called VR Emerald. So they are definitely very different, but kind of similar in the sense that they both are a green to purple shift. So since it was the only thing I could think to compare, I just wanted to pull it out, and look at them next to each other, completely different but I can imagine that uh, Mercurial would look amazing over top of VR Emerald. Let's give it a try. They do work really nicely together. In the look I'm wearing right now, I used Mercurial mainly on the inner corner and blended a little bit down there, and then also tapped just right over the center of the lid as well. Next up, we have Madrigal which is a metallic formula. So Lisa changed the kind of 
categorization of most of the metallics in this collection to be called satin metallics, which more accurately reflects the kind of softer reflectivity and shine that you get with them. But this palette still has two that she's still calling metallics, and this is one of them. So this one does have more shine and reflectivity than the satin metallics that we're finding in the collection and even in this palette. So Mage, which I did already, is a satin metallic. You can see it's just a softer reflect on that. Madrigal is described as a blackened antique green gold. Beautiful, warm olive green. And gorgeous foiling on that too. This is the shadow that I have on the outer half of my lid. The first thing I want to compare is the Victoria Beckham Lid Luster in the shade Velvet. I think these might be quite similar. At least they have a similar feel in the colors. Both have a bit of a deeper base and then this kind of warm, greeny, gold olive. Okay, interesting. They are quite different. Um, I think at certain angles like that, where the gold is really reflecting off of Madrigal, they can look quite similar. But if I shift here, the base of Madrigal looks actually greener. So it's this kind of blackened green. And then the base of Velvet is almost kind of like a warm ochre brown. So they are not nearly as similar as I expected them to be. And so interesting to see how green Madrigal looks in comparison to Velvet, because Velvet does actually come across on the eyes as a beautiful green. Like I don't find it looks like a gold on the eyes. It does look like truly a green color, but very interesting to see those compared. And the other comparison for Madrigal that I have is Vivid, the Scattered Light from Hourglass. There's Vivid. And Vivid almost looks like it's somewhere in between these other two shades. It doesn't have that strong gold reflect that we see in both of these ones, um, but the base of it is probably more similar to the base of Madrigal, but still not really the same. Madrigal still looks warmer. From olive green to emerald green, we're going into Grotto next, and Grotto is the other metallic, so not a satin metallic proper metallic, and it does definitely feel different from the satin metallics, as did Madrigal. Much creamier, not quite as dense, still dense, but it feels more like a cream shadow, and it has this beautiful, strong reflect. And Grotto I used quite sparingly in this look. It's just accenting a little bit on the center of the lower lash line in this look. In my first video on this collection, I featured the shade more heavily, so you can check that out if you wanted to see it on the actual lid. But there's Grotto, and it's described as a cool emerald green. For this one, I really wanted to see how the Charlotte Tilbury Hypnotizing Pop Shot in Emerald Eyes would compare. This is one of probably my favorite eyeshadows ever. It's just stunning, so I wanted to see how it would compare. The Charlotte Tilbury feels a little drier and more textured to the touch. Let me just get Grotto back on my finger so we can see them that way. So that's Grotto, that's Emerald Eyes. Interesting, so Grotto looks lighter. I would say it is shinier, it's more reflective. I think it has more variety in the pearls that are in it. And the base of Emerald Eyes is a little bit more of a kind of gray, kind of like a, a deep gray verging on a black, you can see there. I think the base of Grotto is just a touch warmer. It still looks black there, you can see, but it looks like kind of a richer, deeper, warmer base. And I can see more of a teal blue reflect on the Charlotte Tilbury one. Also wanted to look at this Chantecaille Luminescent eyeshadow in the shade Regal Emerald. This feels very dry to the touch. This is a baked formula, unlike the other two that we've just looked at. So Regal Emerald from Chantecaille looks a little warmer than these other two. Similar depth to Grotto, and it doesn't have nearly the same kind of level of reflect of either of these shades. Although when it's wet, it does become more reflective and shiny 
but still a little bit different, I think. Next up is Swan Song, which is back to the satin metallic formula. And Swan Song is described as a rich sapphire blue. And this will be featured in the other eye look that I'm gonna demo for you in this video. I can think of only one comparison in my collection to this shade, and it's from the Pat McGrath Mothership One palette. It's the shade Blitz Blue right here. There's Blitz Blue. All right, so Blitz Blue is a little bit brighter, less gray in there. It's interesting because Swan Song, I think, looks quite vibrant in the pan, but when it's next to Blitz Blue, which is just so bright and jewel toned, Swan Song looks a little bit more muted, which actually may help it to be a little bit easier to wear for those who are not as comfortable with blue eyeshadows. But similar depths, I would say, Overall, they may have a similar effect on the eye, but they're definitely different shades. Swan Song almost looks a little bit teal in comparison, which it may be um, due to the fact that it's in a green palette. She may have put a tiny little bit of green in there, I'm not sure. And lastly, we have the only matte in this palette, this one right here, which is called Troubadour and it's a seamless matte, so it's not the velvet formula, although it does feel very, very soft and creamy and smooth, just not quite so much as the velvets do. There it is. It's described as a deep, inky teal. Definitely beautifully deep. It's a teal that leans a little bit more toward the green, in my opinion, which I appreciate. It almost kind of looks like a foresty green. And I used this today kind of to start out my eye look after I did the Liquid Lurex base, just to map out a little bit of a kind of wingy type shape and add some depth in kind of the outer part of my eyelid. I also took a tiny little bit of it down on the outer part of my lower lash line. Again, I think I only have one comparison for this one. It's this shade in the Natasha Denona Retro Glam palette, which is called Evergreen. I don't think it's going to be very similar, but I couldn't really think of anything else that I had that would be a good comparison. There is Evergreen. Pretty sure Evergreen is in the cream to powder formula. So those tend to, from Natasha Denona, look a little bit deeper in pan than they actually apply. I think that's true here. So there's Evergreen and Troubadour. Evergreen is lighter, it has more gray in it. It's a little bit more sagey than teal. Troubadour, Grotto, Madrigal, Mercurial, Mage, and Swan Song. I think there's very good reason that this palette was so popular and that it sold out so quickly. I do think it's a very special palette, and the fact that we have just all these greens in one palette and all these different textures um, and temperatures of greens, I think is just so wonderful for anyone who likes green eyeshadow. It's great that we have a deep matte to work with here with all these more shiny, shimmery textures. And I think this matte will again work well with the blue as well. I think this row together can work really nicely together to create a more blue leaning look, which is what I'm planning to do when I create my blue look with this palette. Um, but I think that that matte also plays really nicely. I was a little bit concerned about this deep matte being a seamless matte rather than a velvet because I've just been enjoying the velvet so much and I think they just work so well with a wide variety of colors. That formula works well for the lighter shades but it also works really nicely in the deeper shades like we saw in the Myth palette there were some of those quite deep rich velvets and they were just so beautiful but I actually found this one really quite easy to work with. I don't know how it would work as a base which is part of the purpose of the velvets is to be able to use them as an all-over base for a look. So I'm not quite sure how that would play out, but I think that 
the formula of this, even though it's not a velvet, is really beautiful, really easy to work with, smooth, creamy, and I don't think it suffers from being in the seamless matte formula as opposed to the velvet formula. I love that we have these shinier metallics here, a cool version and a warm version. This mercurial shade is really one of a kind. I don't have anything like it. I'm sure there are indie brands who offer similar things to this, but I don't have anything like it. It's just so mesmerizing in the shifts and the shine. Really something very special about that one and just the way the base is a little bit more transparent. So the way it lays on the skin is really, really special and I think can be beautiful on its own and also works really nicely layered over top of other shadows. And then we have our two metallics in here, which I think are also beautiful. Personally, I could do without the blue because I'm just not really that into blue eyeshadow, but I think it's interesting to have it in here and I think it kind of presents a fun challenge to try and incorporate this into different looks. And this is a blue that I think plays well with the rest of the colors in the palette. And then Mage, as I mentioned before, it's nice to have this lighter satin metallic in here with the strong opaque base so that it has a strong presence of its own and it's a cool enough green that it plays really nicely with both the greens and the blue. So now let's get into the demos. I'm going to show you this look first and the blue one and then I'll come back to say goodbye.
that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it helpful. Let me know if you have any questions or comments below. I always love to see those. If you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.